Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a collab with Chrissy from Mom Topic. If you don't know who she is, you should definitely check her out. The link will be down below to her video and her channel. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be briefly talking about our children's NICU stay or our experience with the NICU. We're going to be giving three tips on surviving the NICU. And on my channel, I'm going to have two of my tips and one of hers, and she's going to have two of her tips and one of mine on her channel. So definitely make sure you go check out her channel after you finish watching my video. So for those of you who don't already know our story, I had twins at 29 weeks and 4 days, and I knew from 20 weeks uh, that I was going to be having premature children. So I wasn't surprised to be in the NICU, but it's still a, definitely a different situation than you would expect. One of my twins had a pretty easy NICU stay. She was in the NICU for 93 days, which is two and a half months. She was intubated for the first three days on CPAP for a month, and then worked a month on just feeding issues and then she came home with me or she came to the place I was staying and we visited Hannah in the hospital. Hannah on the other hand was in the hospital for 507 days uh, which is a year and a half so that's really long and I actually don't think I have ever even stumbled across on any of the groups I'm in of somebody who's had a child in the NICU for that long. It was extremely tough. There was definitely a lot of ups and downs. She was intubated for the first three months, then on CPAP for about two months, I think, and then she was on high flow, and then she went on low flow for six months. Even she was breathing on her own for a week, um, and then she went on BiPAP, and, and then she got a trach. So it was very up and down, because obviously, like, low flow, breathing on your own pretty much to a trach with a ventilator is, like, complete opposites and she was doing so good for so long and then she crashed and obviously in the beginning months uh, she was really sick she got neck she had a heart condition and a bunch of other stuff and a lot of premature babies die from neck in the hospital so we're one of the lucky ones and it wasn't that bad but it definitely really affected her and made it harder for her to do everything so my first tip I would have to say make it feel like home do whatever you can so that it feels like home. I know that's not what you want to do. Nobody wants the hospital to feel like home, but it'll make your whole experience so much better. Bring in music, bring pictures, bring decorations, bring blankets, bring toys. Uh, we even like would put blankets on the floor and like mats and stuff on the floor and play on the ground. Obviously, you're not going to do that with like a tiny little premature new baby, but Hannah was... This, we started doing this when they were a little bit older and obviously we were in the hospital for a whole year and a half so like when they were supposed to be doing tummy time and playing on the floor we would just put them on the floor and make the best of it. Mine are going to be all about breastfeeding and I do understand that some moms in the NICU put formula over breastfeeding which is completely okay. These tips are going to be for those mothers that do breastfeed and these are kind of things that have helped me along the way. When your baby is strong enough to breastfeed I would definitely suggest practice feeding. And by that, I mean while your baby is being fed through the G-tube, preferably at the last 10 minutes or so, put your baby to your breast and let them um, kind of root around. Let them practice so that they get the sensation of being full while being breastfed. This has really helped Dallas and I, and it's a great bonding experience because you get to snuggle your little baby. Don't get discouraged with setbacks. Every Nikki baby, there's like ups and downs and ups and downs, and the doctors, if they are seriously concerned, will tell you, Every baby takes two steps forward and one step back. It's not just your child. Any procedure that they want to do, they wouldn't do it if it was going to cause more harm than good. And if it was still going to be really life-threatening, they would be discussing with you that like this procedure has a lot of risks and we're only doing it because we have no other choice and things like that. Like from going from intubated to CPAP to intubated again, that's fine. Maybe they just need a little bit longer to breathe from CPAP to off CPAP to back onto CPAP, it's normal that your child will take a step back. They have little tiny lungs and they like to give everything they can and then they get tired and that's when you'll notice, but give them a little bit of time and they'll be fine. They'll get through it. Anyways, that's it for the tips and I hope you enjoy this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you would like us to do more collabs on things about the NICU and yeah, have a good day. Bye.